Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making frittata in the Instant Pot. If you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. Now this is one of those clean out your fridge kind of meals, so you can use what I'm using here or you can just use whatever other ingredients that you might have that'll work really well in this recipe. You can see that I just grabbed one bunch of spinach. They're large ones, I'm going to end up cutting these up and I grabbed a package of mushrooms. You can certainly purchase the ones that's already sliced up for you, but the ones at my store didn't look very fresh. So I'm going to slice mine up, and these are kind of large, so I'm going to end up chopping these into more bite-sized pieces. I am going to use the entire container. This is an 8-ounce package of mushrooms. I am using white mushrooms. You can use cremini mushrooms or whatever mushrooms it is that you prefer, but I just like the plain white mushrooms for my family. But I'm going to, again, use the entire package, and I'm going to cut these up into bite-sized pieces because that's what's going to work in this recipe. We are going to heat up our skillet and throw a tablespoon of butter right into our pan. Make sure you've already washed your spinach really well, nice and clean. We are going to go ahead and saute our spinach and our mushrooms before we throw them into our egg blend. I know this looks like a lot, but you know how spinach is. Once you cook it down, it gets really small. So give this a few minutes and let it cook for a little bit, and then you'll see what I'll what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you guys a picture of it in a little bit. But I did go ahead and move mine around a lot so I can get a bit of that buttery flavor right into the spinach leaves. That giant bunch just turned into this. <laughs> Look how little that is. I did go ahead and throw my cut up mushrooms, all of that, right into the pan with the spinach. And I'm just going to saute this together for a few minutes. After a few minutes, go ahead and start adding your seasoning in. I did add salt to mine, add pepper to taste. If you want to add some garlic, you can do that as well. If you want to add other vegetables like an onion, go ahead and chop that up and throw that into the pot as well. Once you have your seasonings in your pan and you're done cooking all of this together, go ahead and turn your stove off and let it cool on its own. Just set it aside. You'll see all the moisture that comes out of it once it's done cooking. I'm going to show you guys that picture as well later. Now go ahead and grab your eggs and start cracking them into a large bowl. I know my ingredients say 10 eggs, but continue watching. I did start off with 8 eggs and I did crack them all into a large bowl and it seemed like it's a lot, doesn't it? I mean the bowl was just full. And then add one and a half tablespoons of sour cream. One and a half to three tablespoons is what you could probably use. If you're going to use milk, make sure it's a, uh, the whole full fatty milk. Don't use the 2% or skim milk at all. Then grab your fork and let's start mixing this away. Just blend all your eggs together, whip it, beat it, do whatever it is that you need to do to get this more smooth and creamy. And to try to blend in your sour cream as well. This might take a few minutes, so just keep going at it. That's all you have to do. Now, in case you guys don't know what a frittata is, it's basically an egg-based dish, similar to like an omelet or a crustless, is it a crustless quiche or scrambled eggs with a bunch of ingredients, meats, cheeses, and veggies. So, and frittata is supposed to be fried, and I know it's not fried, so I know it's not technically a frittata, but this is more of that instead of a quiche because a quiche is supposed to be more creamy. So we can call this a quiche tata because it's not fried. I don't know. This is what we're doing here. <laughs> oh, if you see here, I did grab another tablespoon of butter and I'm just going to grease up my bowl. This is a seven cup Pyrex glass bowl and this is how it looks once I've greased it all up inside. Now I'm going to grab that egg mixture back so I can throw my veggies in there. And before I throw my veggies in there, I wanted to show you guys the extra moisture that came out of that saucepan after we had let it cool down for a bit. See all the liquid that just came right out of that? We don't want any of that liquid inside of our egg because we don't want to have any more moisture into this. So start adding the veggies. What I did was just push my veggies to one side of the pan and kind of squeezed out a little bit of the water with my tongs. And then I went ahead and threw the veggies right inside of my egg mixture. Try to avoid any excess water or liquid that came out of that pan into your egg mixture, okay? 
if you guys want this is where you can also add your cheese as well as any meats that you would like inside of your dish again I am making a basic dish so I'm not going to do anything extra to this right now this is all I'm going to use to keep it simple for you now this part is optional I just noticed with my spinach they looked a little bit long so I just grabbed a pair of scissors and I'm just going to cut them up into little bite-sized pieces because I just I don't know how well it's going to cook or look with just big long pieces of spinach but after that I went ahead and remixed everything up again to make sure I have the egg and the spinach and the mushrooms all nicely blended and hopefully it cooks a little better okay setting that aside I'm going to grab my butter dish now and I'm going to pour everything right into the butter dish now I don't know about you guys but I noticed with my large silver dish it just wasn't cutting it I thought I that's all the eggs I could throw in there and this is where my additional two eggs are going to come into play I wasn't sure if it would all fit, but obviously I have plenty of space. So I went ahead and added two more eggs right into the bowl, and I'm going to mix it all up again. I'm pretty sure you can get away with a dozen eggs if uh, you wanted to as well. Now while this is mixing, I'm just going to remind you guys, remember the cake instant pot that I made? and how I didn't have any of the inside utensils that comes with the pot, or at least I can't find it. Well, this is where this is gonna come back into play. I have added four little balls of aluminum foil right into the Instant Pot with two cups of water. I'm going to sit my glass bowl right on top of it as my feet. And if you also notice, I've made a handle. This is heavy duty aluminum foil that I am using. Make sure you cover your egg dish up tightly with the aluminum foil as well because we don't want any of that steam going right into our egg mixture. We will be cooking this on high at 25 minutes. It's going to take about 15 minutes for the pressure to come to and then the 25 minute countdown will start from there. I let it naturally release its own pressure for 10 minutes before I hit the vent button on because we want the steam to do its magical thing inside of the pot and let it cook. So after the 10 minutes, press that vent to the side and then go ahead and carefully release everything open and use those handles that we've made to bring that out carefully. I laid a towel down for it to sit on top of and then I'm just going to remove the foil away from the camera for you guys so the steam's not all in there and just carefully remove it and this is how it looks. All that you see on top is the butter. That's all there is to it, just the butter. So grab a knife, and all we're gonna do is just cut around the edges, and then you're gonna see the butter seeping down to the sides of it, so it's not gonna just sit right there on top. But I'm just using the knife all around the edge of it, and then I'm just gonna cut it into four. I could tell by cutting through, everything was nicely cooked. Nothing felt like mush, it felt very firm and solid. If you're gonna eat this for breakfast, just some juice or toast or anything else like that would be fine. If you wanna add this for dinner, just throw some hash browns or something more hearty with your quiche frittata, quiche tata dish. <laughs> if you guys like this recipe, please hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, share this video if you'd like. And until the next meal, thank you for watching, watch me cook.